The number 81 was in the news a lot a handful of years ago. According to polls, 81% of American evangelicals voted for Donald Trump in the 2016 presidential election. Though the number may not be in the news so much anymore, the question still lingers. Why did so many evangelicals support and continue to support Donald Trump? And Thea Butler's new book, White Evangelical Racism, has an answer. But it's not about what happened in 2016. It's about what's been happening in this country for many, many years. The elevator pitch is one line from the book. Racism is a feature and not a bug of American evangelicalism. There are many histories about evangelicalism that have been written. Few of them look at race in the way that is substantive or understands that race and racism have been a big part of the movement. And so what this book is about is, first of all, the racial ideologies that lie behind evangelicalism, whether we're talking about that through culture or theology and all these other things. And secondarily, how morality is used in evangelicalism to both buttress the racism and actually sometimes hide it, but also to get political action to happen in order to gain prominence and power in the American political scene and specifically with Republicans. The public conversation, whether that's been a conversation in the news or in the Atlantic or the New York Times or everything else, is evangelicalism is white. We, we just automatically gravitate to that. But not only that, we also gravitate to the ways in which they narrate the story. In other words, the narration of morality, the, the narration of, we just want to go back to good old American values. We, we are patriots, we are this, we are that. All the things that they have said about themselves. And what I wanted to do is like, there's another story here. Lee Atwater talks about how not to look at politics. You don't start off saying this bad word, right? You got to talk about states' rights. You got to talk about different kinds of things. And I think evangelicals are doing something similar. When you pick up the words about the family, for instance. Part of what's happening there is a way to say, well, we're not gonna talk about you know, race explicitly, but we're gonna talk about what is the model for the family. So when I talk about these organizations like Focus on the Family, American Family Association, Family Research Council, on one hand, they are very powerful lobbying organizations, but they actually do something else. And they put these ideas up about family that are really entrenched in evangelical ideology. People think that the Bible speaks to only individual salvation, only individual sin only individual kinds of issues. So that's how you could get somebody like Billy Graham to say, this is not gonna happen till heaven. Because basically for him, it's like, when we get to heaven, all of these things are gonna be wiped away. We shouldn't be fighting for this on earth. And that's a completely different reading than what you know African-Americans are reading. There's a way in which cultural whiteness takes hold in, in evangelicalism in such a way that even if you are a person of color, there's a way in which you have to behave and what you culturally accept vis-a-vis -vis what you can't culturally accept. It's why you have a National Association of Black Evangelicals, because the white ones weren't letting them in. They had to do something. They were part of this you know, theology, but there wasn't a place for them. And I think the way that they worked it out as being this voice of critique within it because they cared about it, but they also knew that they could only go so far in changing it. The evangelical church in America supported the status quo. It supported slavery. It supported segregation. It preached against any attempt of the black man to stand on his own two feet. The difficulty in coming to grips with the evangelical message of Jesus Christ in the black community is the fact that most evangelicals in this country who say that Christ is the answer will also go back to their suburban communities and vote for law and order candidates who will keep the system the way it is. 
when people ask me, is this about Trump? I say, no, 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 this has been part of evangelicalism the whole way through. What I hope that people get out of this book and where my book is a connection to right where we are at this minute is this is about the structure, not just of evangelicalism, but of the United States. 